Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU tries to stop citrus imports from South Africa. European Union readies multi-million euro benchmark rigging fines. EU allows an additional 700,000 tonnes of sugar exports in 2013 and 14. And Italian bonds drop with Spain as the EU says debt targets are at risk. Plus, EU backs insect in animal feed project. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage, an anonymous reporter has leaked information that the European Union is preparing a ban on South African citrus imports that could take orange juice off Europe's breakfast tables next summer and sour efforts in Brussels to broaden trade with Africa's biggest economy. The move follows the interception of 35 citrus shipments this year from Europe's chief summer supplier that were contaminated with the fungal black spot disease, which growers in southern Europe fear could take hold in their citrus growths. Now, in response, the European Commission, the EU executive, was drawing up plans for a ban that could be adopted by European governments by the end of November. Well, I wonder if Scotland leaves the UK, how deeply affected their agriculture might be. Should the orange and lemon growers of Altmahara get an infection of the black spot? Well, that'll be it. It'll be all over. Ark be a feed from the deadly black spot of Africa. EU antitrust regulators will impose record multi-million euro fines on six banks, including Citigroup, Deutsche Bank and Royal Bank of Scotland, on Wednesday for rigging key interest rate benchmarks, sources said. The sanctions, the first by the European Commission for rate manipulation and expected to top one and a half billion euros, follow hefty fines on top of banks for similar offences from authorities in the United States, Britain and elsewhere. Well, clearly the banks have gone out of control on a scale not seen since the 1970s film The Deer Hunter. But I'm struggling to see how imposing massive fines on banks that already are already undercapitalized is going to help matters. Nor is it going to encourage them to rethink their business model. The whole idea of too big to fail is and has been a mistake. The banks should not have been saved from their folly. Governments should have protected the savings of depositors and let those banks that could not meet their credit obligations simply go bankrupt. Such measures would have protected the innocent public depositors and would have been the best method for getting the banks to rethink their business models. An example might have been a National Trusted Savings Bank, underwritten by the UK Treasury. I know. What about the name Trusted Savings Bank, or TSB? In the words of Mrs Thatcher... What a good idea. The European Union will allow exports of an additional 700,000 metric tonnes of sugar in 2013-14 season that started last month, according to the European Commission, the bloc's regulatory arm. Now, the proposal approved at the Sugar Management Committee today will enter into force in early December, the Commission said in an emailed statement. Quotas on the amount of sugar producers are allowed to sell within the domestic market meant that the bloc had to take additional measures to boost local supplies by allowing more domestic sales and boosting imports via tenders. Now, in other words, we call this market protectionism and legislative state aid. However, without such protection, EU sugar production would simply wither and die on the cane, followed by a wholesale buyout by the Chinese. Now, somehow, if Tate and Lyle gets changed to yin and yang, I'm not sure that things will ever be the same. Italy's 10-year government bonds declined for the first time in three days after the European Union Commission said the nation's budget plan does not respect its 2014 debt targets. Spain's securities also dropped as the EU said that while the nation has taken effective action on its deficit, it too may miss its 2014 target. 
The extra yield investors demand to hold Italian 10-year debt instead of German bonds climbed from a three-week low as a euro area report confirmed that inflation slowed to the least in four years last month. Federal Reserve Chairman nominee Janet Yellen said yesterday that easing measures won't be removed soon. Now, I find that last remark rather interesting. I wonder what relationship European member state bonds have with the US Federal Reserve. And more to the point, how does that relate to the Fed's dollar printing strategy? That's one for Dr. Eric Edmund, I think. A European Union funded project, ProTel Insect, aims to change our views about using flies as a source of protein feed for pigs and poultry, but also for human consumption, which is prohibited in Europe. With almost 3 million euros from the European Commission's seventh framework program for research, ProTel Insect wants to provide research that proves the efficacy and safety of insect protein to be used in animal feed. At the moment, insect protein is only allowed in fish or shellfish feed in Europe. Well, with the advent of promoting the eating of anything that looks suitably disgusting on shows like I'm a Celebrity and Bear Grylls Get Out Alive, I'd have thought this will be all the rage. I can see it now. Down the curry house on a Friday night, I'll have two blue bottle barges, sweet and sour horsefly balls and an egg flied rice. Today in our video library... The last of our shameless self-promotion today. All week we have been encouraging, well, OK, perhaps pers more persuading. All right, all right. It's stretching the truth to say that using statements like share the film or you're going to get tasered is persuasive. Not that we want to stretch the truth at all. We leave that sort of thing to the likes of Cameron and Cleggie. I love that. Cameron and Cleggy. it's so last of the summer wine. Anyway, see for yourself how our leaders stretched the truth to the limit. In our documentary, Betrayed, we uncover Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048 and show just exactly how the sovereignty and democratic rights of the people of Great Britain have been given away by successive governments and leaders. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.